Well, hello, fifth grade. I hope you had a great Easter, and I hope that you were able to practice your math facts today, meaning Monday, so yesterday when you're watching this. And I hope that um, you were not affected by the storm today. We lost power twice, um, so that was interesting. We ended up playing glow-in-the-dark uh, egg hunt with some glow sticks and leftover Easter eggs. So that was fun. So um, I told the third and fourth grade about a few games that you could use. I'm just going to show you quickly uh, the games that we used over the weekend. Uh, Trionomos. So in this game, there's a lot of adding, uh, subtracting, uh, multiplying by fives for how many tiles you have to pick up, uh, keeping a running score. So it's a great way to practice your math facts. Um, I did not win. I'm not bitter about it though at all, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I also played a couple games using dice with my daughter today, which was a lot of fun. Um, we would roll the dice and take the two numbers and multiply them together. And if the product was even, I got a point. And if the product was odd, she got a point. And we added up how many points we got at the end of 15 rolls. And whoever had the most points won. And it also wasn't me, but it was still fun. Uh, you could also just uh, each have dice and take turns rolling and multiply the products together and then add all the products together. And at the end of so many rolls, see who has the highest number after adding the products together. So there's a lot of things that you can do besides just reciting your multiplication tables, which is very important, um, or just playing on an app which can be fun and beneficial, or just doing flashcards. You can also use games. Uh, make up some games for yourself. But whatever you do, make sure that you use Monday to practice your math facts. Don't think of it as a day off. All right. Okay, so last time we were together, we talked about greatest common factors. Okay, now, greatest common factors come in very handy when reducing fractions to their simplest forms. You had to know that greatest common factors weren't the end. It was just the beginning. So to, we're going to talk today about um, reducing fractions down to their simplest form. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to show you. So where you have the fraction nine twelfths. Okay, I don't want to show you how to do it quite yet, but we have the fraction nine twelfths. Now nine twelfths is not down to its simplest terms. That means it is not the smallest fraction that it could possibly be. Now remember we talked about equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions take up the same amount, but um, they're numerator and denominator are different. Okay. So the numerator and denominator are either multiplied by the same number to get an equivalent fraction or divided by the same number to get an equivalent fraction. Okay. So in order to reduce a fraction down to its simplest terms, we have to find the greatest common factor of both of the numbers in the numerator and the denominator. Okay. If the greatest common factor is one, then that fraction is already reduced down to its simplest form. But nine twelfths is not reduced down to its simplest form. So we're first gonna find out the greatest common factor of nine and 12. So I'm gonna cover up our reduced fraction so that you can't see what the greatest common factor is. So I listed out all of the factors of nine and 12. We have one, three, and nine for nine, and one, two, three, four, six, and 12 for 12. 
So just by looking at the factors of 9 and 12, what do you see is the greatest common factor, the biggest factor that they both have in common? If you said three, you are correct. So I'm going to circle the threes so I know that the greatest common factor is three. So the way that we find out what the simplest form of nine twelfths is that we are going to divide the numerator and the denominator both by the greatest common factor. Okay, so if the greatest common factor was three, we're gonna divide both of them by three. So nine divided by three is three, 12 divided by three is four. So the simplest form of nine twelfths is three fourths. Remember, nine twelfths and three fourths are equivalent. They both take up the same amount of space. They both take up, they're both the same amount. The way that we know that they're equivalent is that we we divided the top and the bottom by the same number and then it came out to three fourths, okay? So the way that you find out the simplest form of a fraction is finding out its greatest common factor, the numerator and the denominator's greatest common factor and dividing the numerator and denominator by that number, okay? All right, I know that that was a lot, a, a long explanation, but the more we do it, the easier it'll come. And you'll start knowing the greatest common factors pretty fast. All right, so I want you to turn to page 416 in your book. 416 in your book. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> All right. So we're going to look at the top. It says, how can you write a fraction in simplest form? Floors, ceilings, and walls can be covered with tiles. Todd and Martha are putting up 20 ceramic tiles. Of the 20 tiles, 12 are decorated. So 12 out of 20 of the tiles are decorated, or 12 twentieths. The picture also shows that three fifths are decorated. A fraction in its simplest form, a fraction is in its simplest form if the numerator and denominator have no common factors other than one. Okay. So if you look at this, of all of these tiles, these square tiles, there's 20 tiles, okay? 12 of them are patterned, okay? So if you also look at it, there's five rows, okay? And three out of the five rows are decorated or have, um, decorations on them. Okay. So 12 out of 20 is equivalent to three fifths, but we have to figure out how to get that. Now I already explained it on the other fraction, but let's see if we can do it on this one. Okay. So to write 12 twentieths in its simplest form, the first way you can do it is by just keep dividing it and keep dividing it until you can't divide it anymore by the same number. Okay. That's kind of a long way to do it. The easiest way is to find the greatest common factor and divide it by that. But let's just say you want to just keep dividing it. Let's look and see if that works. Okay, so one way says divide by common factors until the only common factor is one. Since 12 and 20 are both even, divide both by two. So 12 divided by two is six, 20 divided by two is 10 but we can tell just by looking at that, that that is not the smallest that it could possibly be. So six and 10 can both be, also be divided by two. So six divided by two is three, 10 divided by two is five. So then we have three fifths and we can't divide it by two anymore. The only thing that both of them can be divided by is one. So we know that three fifths is the smallest it can be. 
is finding the greatest common factor, which is four. So 12 divided by four is three, 20 divided by four is five. So 12 twentieths in simplest form is three fifths. Okay, so let's turn over to check number one. Uh, for homework, you're going to do practice A on page 417 for Tuesday, um, odd, okay? Just practice A. We're not going to do practice B or mixed review and test prep because you're going to have to find the greatest common factors for all of these. A lot of them you'll be able to figure it out in your head pretty fast, not have to list them all out. But um, let's look at number one, okay? So number one of check is nine over 21. Okay, so the greatest common factor of nine and 21 would be three, okay? So we're gonna divide the top by three and the bottom by three. So nine divided by three is three, and 21 divided by three is seven. So nine twenty-one in simplest form is three sevenths. All right, let's look at number two. Okay, so 12 over 30, 12 over 30. So we're gonna find the greatest common factor of 12 and 30. So let's list out our factors. Now, if you list out your factors for your practice in A and um, A odd, a lot of your factors are going to be the same, so don't keep doing them over and over again, okay? All right, so for number two, we're going to do 12. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. Remember, we can check it by doing working our way in. So 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Okay, and then the factors of 30 are 1 and then, okay, so 1, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and then we have 5, um, did three times 10, and then five times six. Okay, so our factors are one, two, three, five, six, 10, 15, 30. Okay, so what is the biggest one that they have in common, the greatest common factor? Okay, they have one in common, two in common, three in common, no four, no five, six in common, and that's the biggest one that they have. So the greatest common factor is six. So you have 12 thirtieths, 12 divided by six, 30 divided by six, 12 divided by six is two, 30 divided by six is five. So the simplest form of 12 over 30 is two fifths. All right. Okay. So number three, seven over 42, the greatest common factor of seven and 42 is seven. The only two factors of seven are one and seven. Okay, so seven divided by seven is one. 42 divided by seven is six. So you have seven over 42 in its simplest form is one sixth. Okay, uh, number four, 12 over 54. The greatest common factor of 12 and 54 is going to be six. So 12 divided by six is two, 54 divided by six is nine. So 12 over 54 in its simplest form is two ninths. And then the last one, number five, 10 over 14. What's the greatest common factor of 10 and 14? Two, okay? So 10 divided by two, five, 14 divided by 2, 7. So 10 fourteenths in its simplest form is going to be 5 sevenths. All right. Is it starting to make sense? I hope so. 
don't worry, this won't be the last time we do it. It won't be the last time you see it. So hopefully it's gonna all start clicking. Remember that light bulb goes on at different times for different people. So don't get worried if it hasn't gone on quite yet for you. All right, so you're gonna do the same thing for practice A odd. So practice A odd on page um, 417. And I'll put the your homework in the description on the YouTube video. Okay, so you're going to do practice A odd. And that's it. Okay, make sure you label them by the number that you're doing them so that I know if you're understanding. Okay, so super fast, we're going to turn over to page 418. This will be for tomorrow. So understanding comparing fractions. Okay, the best way, the easiest way to compare a fraction is if they have the same denominator. So then you know the one that has the lower numerator is obviously smaller. So, um, but if they don't have the same denominator, then how do you know which one is bigger? Okay, so a lot of it is common sense. If you say, let's look at the top of page 418. It says, uh, use fraction strips to show each pair of fractions. Okay, so the fraction strips are going to be these colorful strips right here. Um, and if you look at them, you can kind of see how it's all broken up. And so it says, compare 3 eighths and 5 eighths. Okay, now like I just said, that one's pretty easy. Okay, 3 out of 8 is obviously less than five out of eight. So three out of eight is going to be less than five out of eight. Okay, compare two thirds and one third. Obviously two thirds is going to be more than one third. Two out of three is more than one out of three. Okay, same with seven tenths and four tenths. Seven out of 10 is going to be more than four out of 10. Okay, if you have something divided into 10 pieces and you have seven of them or four of them, obviously seven out of the 10 pieces is more than four out of the 10 pieces. Now those are easy because the denominators are the same. But let's look at when the denominators are not the same. Okay, if you have the same, if you have one piece of, uh, one whole pie or one whole pizza, one whole circle, um, or one whole strip, and it's divided into different amounts of uh, different numbers of pieces, okay? It's still the same size circle or same size strip, um, but it's divided into either bigger or smaller pieces. So let's say you're comparing in letter C, comparing one third and one half. Okay, if you have something, a circle, that's divided into two pieces and you have one of the pieces, or you have a circle, the same exact size circle that's divided into three pieces and you have one out of those three pieces, which one's going to be bigger? Well, obviously one half is going to be bigger than one third because you have one out of two pieces, so those two pieces are bigger, as opposed to one out of three pieces when those when the three pieces are going to be smaller than when it's divided into two pieces okay so one half one out of two is bigger than one out of three okay even though three is a bigger number than two when it's fractions um the denominator shows how many pieces it's broken up into and so the bigger the denominator the more pieces the whole is broken up into, okay? All right, so what about uh, 3 eighths and 3 tenths? Same thing, you have um, an object that is divided into eight pieces or into 10 pieces. So if you have three out of eight pieces, they're gonna be bigger pieces than if you have three out of 10 pieces, okay? So 3 eighths is greater than 3 tenths, okay? So um, for 
Wednesdays, for Wednesday's work, which is tomorrow, I want you to complete reading um, page 418, and I want you to do um, practice A odd again on page 419. So you'll have the same homework on page 417 and on page 419. Okay, well, I will see you on Zoom in a few minutes. So make sure that you have your book and your homework and your pencil and notepad. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes.